fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be talking about what to do about decaf. Chuck it in the bin. Thank you very much for watching. Just kidding. Actually, in this video, I'm going to be doing the opposite of that. I'm actually wanting to talk about better respecting decaf coffee. You can get some great decaf coffee these days, gently decaffeinated via the Swiss water process or the Colombian mountain, mountain water decaf process. So decaf doesn't have to taste horrible. In particular though, in this video, I'm mainly talking about how to deal with decaf with bean to cup coffee machines, which is one of the most common emails I'm getting at the moment. Most people, in my humble opinion, do this wrong, so I'm going to tell you how to do it right. Decaf, historically, has a bad reputation, but a lot of this comes from the way people treat it. The default way to deal with decaf at home with bean to cup coffee machines and with other brew methods has historically been to buy a bag of pre ground decaf. Keep it in the cupboard for decades and blow off the dust and cobwebs when someone comes around who's particularly caffeine sensitive or who's swerving decaf for a specific reason. And then we wonder why people think decaf doesn't taste great. Don't forget, coffee goes staler much quicker once it's ground, as so much of the surface area of the beans are exposed. And if you're buying pre-ground from a supermarket, for example, you have no idea when it was actually ground, so it might be getting fairly stale by the time you buy it. So this definitely is not the way to deal with decaf. When it comes to bean to cup coffee machines, many have a bypass chute, and this is often sold as a way to deal with decaf. Chuck it in the pre-ground chute or the bypass chute out of you know a bag of festering, mouldy, pre-ground coffee sitting in the cupboard. Don't do that. It's wrong. It's illegal. You'll go to prison. Okay, it's not illegal, but it should be. It's illegal to poison people. So how should you deal with decaf? In my humble opinion, there are two ways to approach it when it comes to bean to cup coffee machines. Option one is dual grinder bean to cup coffee machines. And just keep in mind, I said dual grinder, not dual hopper. Yes, all dual grinder machines have dual hoppers, but not all dual hopper machines have dual grinders. And machines with two hoppers and one grinder are very, very silly and should also be illegal. Actually, hoppers are silly, full stop. You don't really need hoppers for home coffee machines. They're good for commercial machines, but not for home machines. The only value of the hopper when it comes to home bean to cup machines is as the route to the grinder. With commercial machines, where you're going to be grinding loads of coffee, you need bean storage in the hopper. So they have value from that perspective when it comes to commercial machines. But if you're making one or two coffees a day at home, for example, you don't need that. You can keep your beans in airtight storage so they're not stale when you come to make your next coffee. So if you follow the advice I'm going to be giving shortly, you won't actually use the hopper to store beans. You'll just be using it to load the beans you're about to use as the route to the grinder. So two hoppers feeding the same grinder doesn't make sense. All this does is give you two places to store beans to then feed the same grinder. And hoppers are among the worst place to store coffee beans. You may as well leave them in an open bag. I've had similar questions from people using traditional espresso machines and standalone grinders. Should they buy a second hopper and keep decaf in that? And it's a similar thing, well, the same thing, really. The only point in doing that would be to use that hopper to store that coffee. But hoppers are rubbish for storing coffee in as they're not usually airtight, so why would you want to do that? So a bean-to-cup coffee machine with two grinders and two hoppers, good. A bean-to-cup coffee machine with one grinder and two hoppers, or one grinder and a hopper split in two, bad. The reason for this is very simple. When you have a dual grinder machine, whatever grinder you select, you'll be drinking 100% that coffee or there or thereabouts. But with a dual hopper machine with one grinder, you'll be drinking a mixture of the two. You may have heard of something called grinds retention, which is where there's ground coffee inside the grinder that ends up being used in the next coffee from the last time you ground. But with bean to cup coffee machines with two hoppers, two channels feeding one grinder, you have this plus you have the retention of unground coffee beans sitting on top of the burrs at the time that you switch hoppers. So the only way you'd end up drinking, for example, 100% decaf after switching to your hopper with decaf in would be if you made coffee and threw it away. But you'd never really know exactly how much coffee you'd need to throw away. And it could be just one cup. It could be more like two or three coffees every time you switch from one side of the hopper to the other. When it comes to dual grinder machines, a lot of commercial 
coffee machines, beans to cup coffee machines have dual grinders, but not many domestic machines do. The only two I know of at the moment are the DeLonghi Mace Tosa, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and the Siemens EQ9 Plus Cadet 700S. The DeLonghi Mace Tosa, apart from how difficult it is to pronounce, and it means majestic, by the way, which I can pronounce, this is potentially a good option for decaf as it has two hoppers feeding two separate grinders. It's a touchscreen machine. I've not used it yet, but it does look very impressive on paper, to be fair, and I will review it soon. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I've done that. It isn't cheap, it's a couple of grand, which is one of the main reasons this possibly isn't the way forward for decaf for most people. The Siemens EQ9, and just make sure you're looking at the dual grinder version. It's obvious if you look at a photo because it's got two hoppers. This is a bit cheaper than DeLonghi. It's still not exactly a cheap machine, and I'll link to both in the description below, by the way. Again, it has two hoppers and two grinders. It's a touchscreen machine, and it looks pretty good on paper. And I will get my hands on one of them at some point and review it. So... If you have this kind of a budget and you regularly want to switch from decaf to full caffeine, a bean to cup machine with two separate grinders is an option. But I still wouldn't use the hoppers to store coffee in, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Option two for dealing with decaf is the bypass tube. I know you're thinking, Kev, you've already said this doesn't work, but no, I was talking about using the bypass tube for pre-ground coffee. What the bypass chute does work for, in my humble opinion, is for buying decent quality decaf whole bean, kept either separated into individual doses or daily doses, and frozen, or at least kept in an airtight jar, and then ground via a separate grinder and dosed via the bypass chute. You don't need a really expensive grinder for this. One of the grinders I spoke about in this video should be fine, such as the Gazia MD15, the Bratza Encore, Sage Dose Control Pro, Sage Smart Grinder Pro, etc. Or if you have a bit more of a budget, maybe one of the Yuka Minion grinders, and just grind your decaf and then use bypass chute. You may think I'm mad for suggesting that you spend extra money on a separate grinder for decaf of the beans cup machine, but versus spending a couple of grand on a machine with two grinders, I don't think it's that crazy an idea, to be honest. The best option, I reckon, if you're thinking of doing this, is to get a grinder you can single dose with and don't ever leave beans in the hopper. Keep them in airtight containers or frozen in pre-weighed out doses or daily doses and single dose. By the way, never freeze beans in bulk because taking them out each time and then putting them back in will ruin them over time. You'll probably hear reports that freezing coffee beans is bad as it damages the structural integrity of the beans due to moisture fluctuations. And that's right, but only if you're taking them out and putting them back in again or breaking the seal before you let them thaw. So don't freeze coffee in bigger volumes and keep taking the bag out of the freezer because this will damage the coffee. Freeze them in small individual doses, then take them out, let them thaw, and then break the seal only when you're going to use them. When it comes to letting them thaw, how long you should leave them to thaw depends on what you're storing them in. You'll probably find if you're sealing them in plastic sealy bags, it'll be under an hour for them to come up to room temperature. But if it's in glass jars, for example, it might be a few hours, so probably best to leave them out the night before. Just make sure they're sealed before you put them in the freezer and give them time to thaw before you break the seal. Don't open them and then let them thaw. So, single dosing. If you've got one of the Eureka Mignon grinders or a Sage grinder, you can buy a single doser attachment. Sage or Breville, by the way. You can buy a single doser attachment and bellows for these, and they don't cost much at all. These replace the hopper. They usually shorten the height of the machine as they're usually shorter than the hopper. And you just weigh the beans you're about to use and then push the bellows at the end of the grind to reduce the retained grounds as much as possible. And I'll link to these in the description too. This way, when it comes to your decaf at least, you'll be single dosing. So your decaf won't be festering as pre-ground, but it'll be properly stored as whole bean and ground as required for optimum results. But remember, hoppers are a terrible storage solution. So why store your full caffeine coffee in the hopper of your beans cup coffee machine? Why not do the same? Keep your full caffeine beans in airtight storage and just weigh in the beans you're about to use each time. You don't necessarily need to freeze your full caffeine coffee. If you're likely to go through it quicker but keeping it in an airtight storage container and then just getting out roughly what you're about to use is a far better idea as far as I'm concerned than leaving beans to go stale in the hopper. 
If you have far too much coffee, by the way, and you want to keep it fresh for longer, just put full unopened sealed bags in the freezer and get them out when you're running low. And just remember not to open them until they've thawed. And if you want decent decaf, by the way, just keep in mind that there are some really good decafs out there. I have a decaf here at the Coffee Works, seaworks.co.uk. Only one, but in my humble opinion, it's amazing. Drink it black and it tastes like caramelized, caramelized biscuits. Add milk and it transforms it into a gingerbread latte taste without the syrup. I'll link to this in the description below. And if you're trying any of my coffee at coffeeworks, seaworks.co.uk, use the discount code YT25 for 25% off your first order. This decaf is a Colombian mountain water decaf, by the way. And if you shop around, you'll find loads of small batch roasters who offer decaf, which has been decaffeinated this way or with a similar process, not chemically decaffeinated. So there you go. You now know one of the best options or two of the best options for dealing with decaf with beans and cup coffee machines. Thank you very much for watching. And if you didn't really, really hate this video, then please click the like button. Cheers. This isn't to caress my ego, but to help YouTube to share the video with more people. And if you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited coffee botherer, also known as Patreon supporter. Just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog kev. Tatty bye.